Our topic for today is about simplifying rational expressions involving factoring of polynomials. But before that, we have to recall first the different factoring methods that we have discussed. We have five different factoring methods, which are common monomial factoring, difference of two squares, perfect square trinomial, sum and difference of two cubes, and general trinomial. Let's recall it one by one. For common monomial factoring, to know that a polynomial can be factored using this method, the two terms or the terms of the given polynomial must have common factor. Like for example, we have 2x plus 10. What is their common factor? 2. And to get the remaining factor, we just have to divide the polynomial by the common monomial factor. 2x plus 10 divided by 2, you get x plus 5. And your final answer, you just have to combine the common monomial factor and the remaining it will be written like this, 2 times x plus 5. This will be the answer. For the difference of two squares, this is one of the special cases to identify if the polynomial is in this case. Each term must be a perfect square and the operation must be subtraction. Your answer will be written this way. You will just get the square root of each term. Square root of 4x squared is 2x. Square root of 25 is 5. And then we will use different signs. So it will be 2x plus 5 times 2x minus 5. This will be your final answer. For the perfect square trinomial, to identify if the given polynomial is a perfect square trinomial, the first and last term must be a perfect square. And when you get their square root times 2, that must be equal to the middle term. Okay, so to get the answer, it will be written like this. You will just get the square root of the first term, which is x squared, it will become x. And the square root of the last term, 36, it will be 6. And you will just copy the sign of the middle term. And for sum and difference of two cubes, to identify if a polynomial is in this form, each term must be a perfect cube. And then, to get the answer, it will be written this way. The binomial will come from the cube root of each term, cube root of 8, x cubed is 2x, and cube root of 27 is 3. Just copy the sign of the given polynomial, so it will be 2x minus 3. And to get the trinomial, for the first term, for x squared, you just have to square the first term of the binomial, which is 2x. So 2x squared will give you 4x squared. For the last term, which is 9, you just have to square 3. So 3 squared will give you 9. And for the middle term, you just have to multiply the terms in the first binomial. 2x times 3 will give you 6. This will be the final answer. And for the general trinomial, you just have to factor the last term. Factors of 8 are 1 and 8 and 2 and 4. To identify which of these pair of factors will we use for our answer? The product of it must be equal to the last term and the sum of it must be equal to the middle term. So the product 1 times 8 and 2 times 4 will give you 8. So both are correct. But when we add them, 1 plus 8 and 2 plus 4, as you can see, 1 and 8 will give us the middle term. So this will be the factors that we are going to use for our answer. Our answer will be written this way. x plus 1 and then x plus 8. It came from positive 1 and positive 8. This will be the final answer. Okay, so that is just a recall. If you forgot this factoring methods, you may watch again or read again the lessons that we have discussed about this. Now, let us proceed in simplifying rational expressions. These are the steps. The first one, identify the kind of factoring that you can apply for each term. Second, factor the numerator and the denominator. And the third one, cancel the common factor. Okay, let's proceed now to first example. Example number one, 5y minus 15 over 2y minus 6. First step, let's identify what factoring method can we apply to simplify this rational expression. So for the numerator, 5y minus 15, can we apply here common monomial factoring? 
Yes, so for the numerator, we will apply common monomial factoring. How about for the denominator, 2y minus 6? Can we apply common monomial factoring? Yes, so we can also apply here common monomial factoring. Next, for the second step, let's start factoring. So for the numerator, when to apply common monomial factoring, we have to get their common factor. So what is the common factor between 5y and 15? Yes, so their common factor is 5. It means you can divide 5y by 5. You can also divide 15 by 5. Okay, so to get the remaining factor, we will be dividing the polynomial by the common monomial factor. So it will be 5y divided by 5. Y. Okay, and negative 15 divided by 5, you'll get negative 3. Next, for the denominator, Let's get the common factor between 2y and 6. What is their common factor? Yes, so their common factor is 2. And to get the remaining factor, just divide the given polynomial by the common monomial factor. So 2y divided by 2, you'll get y. And negative 6 divided by 2, you'll get negative 3. Okay, now... Let us proceed to the third step. Cancel all the common factor. So let's see. Compare the numerator and the denominator. What is their common factor? So they are the same with y minus 3. We just have to cancel it out. And your final answer will be 5 over 2. This will be your answer. Next, example number 2. So we have 3x plus 6 over x squared minus 4. The first step is, let's identify what factoring method can we apply. For the numerator, 3x plus 6, can we apply the common monomial factoring? Yes! So we will be applying here the common monomial factoring. How about for the denominator, x squared minus 4? Can we apply common monomial factoring? No, because x squared and 4 have no common factor. How about the difference of two squares? Is this in the case of difference of two squares? Yes, so we can apply factoring for the difference of two squares. Now, let's proceed to the second step, wherein we may start factoring. For the numerator, let's apply the common monomial factoring. So, we have to get the common factor between 3x and 6. So, what is their common factor? It is 3. And now, to get the remaining factor, we just have to divide this polynomial by the common monomial factor. So, 3x divided by 3, you'll get x. And then, positive 6 divided by 3, you'll get positive 2. And for the denominator, since this is difference of two squares, to get the factors, you just have to get the square root of each term. Square root of x squared and square root of 4. So for x squared, square root is x. And then for the, for the square root of 4, it is 2. So for your answer, it will be like this. x and then 2 x and then 2, then you will use different operation, plus and minus sign. So that's how we solve difference of two squares. Now, let's proceed to the third step, which is canceling all the common factor. So observe, look at the numerator and the denominator. What do they have in common? So they are the same with x plus 2. So we have to cancel it out. Now, for your final answer, we'll just have 3 and then x minus 2. So this will be our answer. You do not have to copy the parentheses since we do not have other factor in the denominator. So it will just be x minus 2. Now, let's proceed to example number 3. a squared minus 25 over a cubed minus 125. 
So the first step again is to identify what factoring method we can apply to simplify this rational expression. For the numerator, a squared minus 25. So let's see, can we apply common monomial factoring here? No, say they have no common factor. How about the difference of two squares? Yes, so we can apply here the difference of two squares. How about the denominator? A cubed minus 25. Can we apply common monomial factoring here? No. How about difference of two squares? No, because A cubed is not a perfect square. How about the perfect square trinomial? Of course not, because this is not a trinomial. I mean, what else? Sum and difference of two cubes. Can we apply it here? Yes. So, we will be applying here the sum and difference of two cubes. Now, let's proceed to the second step. We may now factor the numerator and the denominator. For the numerator, this is for difference of two squares. It means that our answer will have two binomials. We will be getting the terms from the square root of our given polynomial. Now, let's get the square root of a squared. So, what is the square root of that? A. How about the square root of the second term, which is 25? 5. So, we'll have a plus 5 and then a minus 5. That's how we solve difference of two squares. Now, for the denominator, since this is sum and difference of two cubes, we expect an answer with a binomial and a trinomial. Now, to get the binomial here, we just have to get the cube root of each term in the given polynomial. So, it will be cube root of a cube and cube root of 125. So, what is the cube root of a cube? It is equal to a. How about the cube root of 125? This is 5. So, we will just write here a and then 5. Then, the sign will be from the given polynomial. So, it will be a minus sign. And in the pattern of sum and difference of two cubes, if the binomial has a minus sign, automatically the trinomial here will have two positive signs. Now, to get the first term here, it will be coming from this term, A. We just have to square the first term of the binomial. So, this will be a squared. And then for the last term, we just have to square the last term of the binomial. So 5 squared, it will give you 25. And for the middle term, we just have to combine the two terms in the binomial. So it will be 5 times a. 5 times a will be 5a. So that will be the factor of our denominator. Now, let's proceed to the third step. What is the third step? Cancel all the common factors. Compare the numerator and the denominator. What is their common factor? So, they are the same with a minus 5. So, we have to cancel a minus 5. And we'll get now a plus 5 for the numerator, ito po yun, over the denominator, which is a trinomial. So, a squared plus 5a plus 25. If you cannot factor this anymore, this will be our final answer. For the last example, example number 4, we have here 5x squared plus 20x over x squared plus 7x plus 12. Now, the first step again is to identify what factoring method can we apply here. For the numerator, 5x squared plus 20. What factoring method can we apply? Can we apply here common monomial factoring? Yes. So we can apply here common monomial factoring because they have common factor. How about x squared plus 7x plus 12? Since this is a trinomial, our choices are just common monomial factoring perfect square trinomial, and the general trinomial. Can we apply here common monomial factoring? No, because they do not have common factor. How about the perfect square trinomial? Dapat pag perfect square trinomial, 
perfect square ang first term, perfect square din ang last term. Perfect square po ba ang first term? Yes. How about the last term? No. So, we cannot apply here perfect square trinomial. How about general trinomial? So, yun na lang ang natitira nating choice. I-apply yeah, natin yung general trinomial. Now, let us proceed to the second step wherein we may start factoring our rational expression. So for the numerator, we will apply common monomial factoring. So, what is their common factor? 5x squared and 20x. 5 and 20, what is their common factor? Yes, it is 5. How about x squared and x? What is their common factor? It will be x. For variable, you just have to get the variable with lowest exponent, which is x raised to y. So, we have here x. And now, let's get the remaining factor by dividing the polynomial by the common monomial factor. 5x squared divided by 5x will get x, the second, so u5, and then just subtract the exponent of the variable. Then for 20x, 20x divided by 5x, so 20 divided by 5 will give you positive 4, and x divided by x will just be 1, so wala na po iyon, cancel. Now, let's proceed to the denominator. So how will we factor a general trinomial? We have to get first the factor of the last term. So what are the factors of the last term? We have 1 times 12. It can also be 2 times 6 and 3 times 4. To know what pair of factors will be used, that we just have to add them and the result or the sum must be the same with the middle term. Now, let's add. 1 plus 12 will give you 13. 2 plus 6 will give you 8. And 3 plus 4 will give you 7. Pag pinag-add natin. So, alin dyan ang kaparehas ng middle term? So, this will be 3 and 4. It means, that will be the factors that we're going to use for our answer. So, it will be written this way. x for the factors of x squared. And we will use positive 3 and positive 4 for the factors of 12. So, this will be our factors for the denominator. Now, let's proceed to the third step. We're in. We just have to cancel out the common factor. So, what is the common between the numerator and the denominator? They are the same with x plus 4. So, cancel. We'll have 5x over x plus 3. So, this will be our final answer.